Today, I'll share the method I use to 100% money back guarantee break bad habits. I've used it to quit addictive substances, to stop eating unhealthy, to quit various distracting or addictive websites. And I still use some version of this pretty much every day to prevent myself from making bad decisions. Welcome to Early Owl. My name is Yavla. And on this channel, we learn how to optimize our mindset and systems that shape our life. The title might come across as a little bit clickbaity. And I mean, it is a little bit clickbaity, but I do think the 100% is true because it's kind of built into the method itself that if you're following it, it has to be 100% effective because that's kind of what it's built around. Either it breaks the habit or you're not going far enough with implementing the method. So I call this the no way out method and the name kind of describes how it's implemented. If you have something you want to quit, you put yourself in the position where you have no other way out than to quit. So I think there's two reasons why this method works for me. First of all, the hard part of breaking a habit or addiction is always the first few days. And the longer you're able to abstain, the easier it becomes. And the second reason is because the cravings or whatever it is comes in waves. What I generally experience is that I don't feel cravings at the beginning of the day when I write just when I wake up. So I just need to shore myself up then so that for the rest of the day, I'm not able to make any bad decisions. So exactly what no way out means for you depends on the specific habits you're trying to break and is something you need to experiment a bit with. So let's say I'm trying to quit a horrible almond addiction. Every day I eat a kilo of almonds and I'm getting fat and it has to stop, but I just can't help myself because almonds are so delicious. The first step, which is something everyone should do always if they're trying to quit something, is just not have it in the house. That is pretty easy. But then what I need to do from there is just make sure I have absolutely no other way of getting almonds. I know there's a bunch of different almond delivering companies that just deliver almonds to my door. So what I would do then is set up website blockers on all of my devices, be that my phone, my computer. So basically for everything that has an internet connection, I need to block off those websites so that I can no longer order almonds online. And then another problem is that I know they sell almonds right across the street, so basically any time during the day, if my urges reach peak level, I could just go over and satisfy my cravings. So what I need to do then is just make it impossible for me to buy almonds. And sadly, the only way to do this is make it impossible for me to buy anything. The first step I do here is that I have these little boxes called kitchen safes. It is basically a little box with a lid on it that you can turn and it lets you set a timer for how long you want this to be locked for. Basically anything that allows you to lock yourself out for a specific time works. Now, this is what I used to do for a while, but then eventually what I realized is that I can connect my phone with Google Wallet and then I can go across the street and use that to buy almonds. So the next step in my process, so I can kind of just shore off things even more, I turn off NFC on the phone so I can't use the wireless payment thing. And then I use an app called, I think, Focus Me that blocks off settings, it blocks off App Store, basically blocks anything I could use to turn on NFC again. And that's where my threshold kind of is right now. I could theoretically break up the kitchen safes and get access to money so I could go buy almonds, but these boxes are pretty expensive to replace, like $30, $40. And I would also feel like a complete idiot if I do that. So I don't generally do that. But if I did start doing that and I still couldn't break the habit, then I think the next step for me would be to get a timed safe, like a real safe, which I could only open up with dynamite. So that is basically the idea. I would set this up every morning and for the first week or so, when you're really trying to break the habit, be extremely strict about it. Like don't leave any room for error. And then as you become more separated from the habit, you can be a bit more lenient, but I would advise you to lean towards being careful because all it takes is just one bad day where you're just kind of Fuck it, I don't care anymore. And then you're going to undo a lot of progress. So there's two reasons why I think this method is so great. First of all, as I said, it works. If the only option I have to get almonds is to steal them, I'm not going to get almonds. I'm not going to rob a store just to get some almonds. But the second reason, which I think is the much more important reason, if you don't have the option to indulge in whatever bad habit you're trying to break, the urge almost completely disappears. It's kind of the reverse of how you're going through the store and you're in the aisle and there's a bunch of candy and suddenly you crave candy. If your mind and body completely knows that there's no way you can get whatever thing you're craving, it just kind of dials down the cravings throughout the entire day. 
So by using this method, it both ensures that I stick with it and makes it significantly easier to do. The obvious downside of this method is that it can be a bit of a hassle to set up and also that it can obviously be a bit inconvenient if you don't have access to money, for example. And I think depending on the habit you're trying to break, you should be willing to make quite significant sacrifices to make it stick. Say we're talking about a habit like smoking. It costs a lot of money. It has a bunch of immediate side effects. It's going to have horrible consequences for your health long term, and you're just going to die earlier, basically. So if you're kind of looking at this on one side, unless you need to basically chop off both of your arms to quit this habit, I think it's very hard to make the case that some minor inconveniences for a little while is not worth quitting this habit. I would also be open to setting up some time to do this. For example, if the only way you can see yourself doing this is just taking a week off work and locking yourself into your apartment, then that is still, at least in my opinion, a hundred times worth it if it makes you quit smoking. So for me, how I do this is I basically set up this little array of locks for 23 hours every morning, assuming I know I don't need my wallet or my money for something. Another final tip would be to be wary of excuses you make for why this wouldn't work. There's generally always a way around it, especially if you have like a partner or a friend or a colleague who can help you out, then you have a lot more leeway on the restrictions you can put on yourself and be willing to make sacrifices if you're quitting a habit that is like really impacting your life negatively. Like that might mean just not going out to social things for a week because you can't have access to money because you know if you go out with your wallet, you're going to buy cigarettes on the way home. Or you could ally yourself with a friend so that you don't bring money, but they're gonna pay for you but they're not gonna buy cigarettes for you and you're just gonna send them the money. I do also use some form of this in my everyday life, even if I'm not trying to quit any specific habits. If I'm on a diet where I'm trying to cut weight, I will generally lock my money away and block access to ordering websites just to take away the temptation of going across the street and buying a bunch of junk. Even though I wouldn't do it 99% of the time, just knowing that I don't have the option makes it a lot easier to stick with. And similarly, I use it for snacks, which actually is almonds and dark chocolates. I basically measure out the amount of snacks I have for the day. And then I store the rest of the snacks in this like inside mailbox I bought. And then I take the key and put it inside of the kitchen safe. And it's not that I would gorge on snacks every day if I didn't do this, but just not having the option makes my life easier. I also find this incredibly useful when it comes to focus and distractions. Basically from 11 p.m. to 1 p.m. All of my devices are now blocked off from like so many things. It includes YouTube, YouTube analytics, Reddit, and any like distracting website, and even somewhat useful sites like email or Slack or Discord. I basically don't want to have the option in the morning to just be sucked into a procrastination hole. And as mentioned, it doesn't only prevent me from doing that, it makes it easier to focus because I don't have this nibbling thought, oh, maybe I should check this on Reddit because I know I can't check it on Reddit, so I don't even have the thought. So that was what I have to say about breaking bad habits. Next week, I'm releasing another habit on the flip side of this coin, which is about how I've been maintaining 16 positive habits for the last 60 days. So if you want to check that out, you should definitely subscribe. And if it's already out, then it should be somewhere around here in the recommendation area. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Wednesday.